child, uh, tobacco consumption is still increasing. Uh, depending on estimate, at least uh, 15 billion cigarettes are consumed every day. And as you know, uh, there are about 4,000 compounds in, in tobacco smoking, and greater than 70 of them are established uh, carcinogens. And, and this map shows the number of deaths uh, by tobacco smoking in 2016 all over the world. And you can notice that uh, uh, this is not corrected for population size. And so the, the countries with the high rate of, of death are the, the countries that are highly populated. But the point of this one is just to show that if you quickly take a look, uh, uh, it's, it's a global problem. And if you put this together, you get that uh, at least uh, 10, 12 million people every year die of tobacco-related uh, disease. And, and when you're looking at the impact of tobacco smoking health-related, it's not just cancer, uh, as indicated by the tissues in, in red, but uh, you impact pretty much every single tissue in, uh, uh, in, in the body, and it could be from serious complications like uh, um, heart and heart attack uh, to more cosmetical like stinking of uh, tobacco smoke uh, uh, teeth problem and so on and, and and as you well know uh it's estimated that tobacco smoking is responsible for at least 90 percent of all lung cancers and for 75 percent of all chronic bronchitis and and emphysema and what we're going to focus today is the, the evidence that we have on the impact of tobacco smoking on, uh, on reproduction. Um, when you think about uh, an abnormal reproductive effect, you need to keep in mind that uh, the result of the abnormal reproductive outcome may go back at least uh, a couple of generations. And we're going to hear more about this one also when from the speakers later, but basically you need to consider the fact that uh, the germ cell that produced uh, that abnormal uh, outcome may uh, had a long history that goes back to being a primordial germ cell in the grandmother of the child with, with the abnormalities. And this is just uh, a, a very um, schematic representation of uh, landmarks that are happening uh, for both maternal uh, germ cells and paternal germ cells during the neuter exposure, after the birth of the parents, and there are every uh, of these um, landmarks may be susceptible to an induction of uh, genetic or an epigenetic uh, uh, um, alterations that will contribute to the abnormal reproductive outcome. So you need to consider uh, as a whole uh, the history of that family to uh, really understand uh, the cause of that reproductive outcome. In addition, when you start talking about how you get from uh, uh, an exposure to an abnormal reproductive outcome, there are multiple steps al along the way. And, and again, this is a schematic representation of what you need to consider. As Kerry uh, pointed out, you need to understand uh, the exposure. Uh, the external exposure, because as he said, if there is not an exposure, there is no risk. And, but also, it's not sufficient to just understand uh, uh, the, expo the external exposure itself, but also how much of that exposure actually reaches the target uh, tissue, in this case, uh, uh, the, the testes or, or, or the ovary. And, and then, uh, based on the internal dose, uh, you need also have to understanding how much of that internal dose you need uh, to start affecting some cellular pro important cellular processes or molecules, and how that triggers an early biological response from the system that may be able to compensate for that uh, uh, exposure. And you can distinguish between earlier uh, response, for example, uh, activating the cell cycle control, for example, recognizing that uh, you have been hit, to uh, intermediate biological effects, and that uh, the end result is that if you are not being able to properly take care of that uh, insult, you will end up with, with an abnormal reproductive outcomes. And all of these uh, steps 
are then can be modulated by host factors that can be uh, including genetic susceptibility that may uh, contribute to how much or how fast along this path you go. And in addition, something that I will not have time to go over on, there is also the fact that when we are talking about paternally transmitted effects, it's also very important what is happening in the egg uh, in the first uh, uh, few hours after fertilization and how the egg is able or not to deal with whatever the sperm bring, bring into, into the egg. And that can have a profound impact on whether you're going to have a genetic defect that is transmitted or that uh, uh, is uh, taken care of. Uh, as I said, I'm going to have a couple of slides on, on uh, uh, female germ cells. And uh, this is just summarizing some of the evidence that we have of the impact of tobacco smoking on the female germ, uh, germ, uh, germ line. We know that maternal smoking is associated with a, a, a reduction in the number of oocytes that are retrieved when the women are going for in vitro uh, fertilization uh, clinics. Uh, there is a dose-related decrease at the age of menopause. Uh, at least a two-month delay in natural conceptions, and also a significant increase of uh, spontaneous abortions uh, that affects both uh, women who are undergoing IVF, but also uh, natural fertilization. So uh, there are fundamental and critical impacts of uh, maternal smoking on, uh, on reproduction. When we are thinking about uh, uh, the effects in, in, in male germ cells, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, uh, the type of damage that can be induced by tobacco uh, smoking or any exposure, it's dependent on the stage that, uh, the stage susceptibility of, uh, of germ cells and how they respond. And this one is the schematic representations of spermatogenesis. Uh, you can uh, divide them spermatogenesis in a mitotic phase, a meiotic phase, and a postmeiotic phase, and the different cell types that you find during spermatogenesis. This is a more uh, realistic representation of uh, the uh, um, structure of the seminiferous tubules. And so here you have uh, the tubule, the basal, basal lamina, and then going from the basal the tubules into the luminal side and uh, the more uh, the spermatogonia are toward the base, and then as they progress to, through spermatogenesis, they move uh, uh, toward the luminal. And here is the one important component of the blood test is barrier, the tight junction between uh, two Sertoli cells. And here you can see that the spermatogonia is on the open side uh, of, of the barrier. And what is uh, uh, really needs to be kept in mind, especially when we're talking about genetic damage, is the fact that uh, DNA synthesis is confined mostly to the mitotic phase of spermatogenesis, and in addition, that toward the end of uh, spermatogenesis, the ability to repair DNA damage goes away, and so this one becomes a sensitive window for the induction of DNA adducts, strand breaks, and as uh, Jaqueta mentioned also, uh, protamine adducts that may result in chromosomal damage after fertilization. And if you're looking at point mutations, uh, the target cell is more spermatogonia. And if you're looking at uh, aneuploidy or a recurrent copy number variant, then the spermatocytes is that it, the cell target more, more sensitive to, to the exposure. I'm going to now quickly go through the evidence that uh, we have for tobacco smoking inducing genetic effects in male germ cells. And these are basically summarized here. Uh, and I will show you data showing that the paternal smoking is associated with impaired fertility and sperm DNA damage, alterations in chromosome numbers in sperm, tandem repeat mutations, and also congenital, congenital malformations and cancer in the offspring. And this one is nicely summarized by a review uh, that we published a couple of years ago, and Carol mentioned that, and Mark Beal was instrumental in putting all this data uh, in summarizing uh, this data. And so we start looking at the effects of uh, uh, tobacco smoking on fertility and DNA damage in sperm. 
and these are the types of uh, parameters that uh, uh, are, there is a data available, the specific endpoint uh, that was measured, the species where uh, the, uh, the endpoint was measured, uh, the number of studies that are published, how many studies had uh, an, a significant effect of smoking, and the effect size for uh, those studies. And you can see that uh, there are plenty of studies confirming that uh, depending on uh, level of smoking, there is an impact on fertility and DNA damage. And the other thing to point, in, point, uh, point out, that especially for some of these sperm assays, we also have quite a lot of data in humans. So we don't have to rely just uh, on animal models, but we can really look at the uh, effect uh, on human germ cells. Um, there is also, I uh, want to, to briefly go over this study because this is one of the few studies where multiple endpoints were analyzed and not just a single endpoint. And this is a study that we did uh, uh, a few years back when I was still at Lawrence Berkeley in which we exposed uh, uh, male mice to not only mainstream smoke but also to sidestream smoke. There was a question early this morning about the impact on not just uh, uh, first-hand, but second-hand, and also third-hand smoke. And then we measured uh, uh, different endpoints related to both uh, uh, DNA, uh, sperm uh, DNA integrity, but also an effect on reproduction, uh, looking specifically at fertilization rate and also embryonic development. And different, uh, uh, the mice were exposed for two weeks to either mainstream or sidestream, and then uh, uh, analyzed both for the sperm reproduction, but then we also waited at least 42 days to look at the effects in, uh, in mitosis. And you can see that uh, we saw uh, significant effect in most of the endpoints that uh, uh, we analyzed. And interestingly, we also see some difference in the response to mainstream and sidestream smoke for some of these endpoints. So that sidestream smoke is not exactly equivalent to, to mainstream smoking. Um, the other um, endpoint for which there is good data demonstrating an effect of tobacco smoking uh, on, on male germ cells is the data demonstrating the impact of, uh, of aneuploidy. And interestingly, these are all uh, human studies uh, in which they analyzed the, the presence of numerical abnormalities in the sperm. And you can see that in seven of those ca of, uh, nine cases, they found uh, uh, a significant effect, and the effect was from 1.2 to to four to fourfold increase. And I'm giving you this number because when we you look at the effect of chemotherapy in human sperm, you find a fivefold increase in numerical abnormalities. So you can see some of these studies. The effect of smoking was almost uh, equivalent to the effect of chemotherapy when you receive. Uh, high doses of uh, um, uh, strong genotoxic agents. Then there is also evidence that tobacco smoking is induced with the induction of thunder repeat mutation in both sperm and children. Again, it's another endpoint where there is data in both humans and uh, rodents. The number of studies are small. But they were all uh, uh, pretty much old studies found uh, um, a significant effect, and specifically, mouse studies showed the smoking increased thunder repeat mutation in sperm by twofold. And the studies in humans was also uh, able to demonstrate not only an effect of smoking, but that there was also a dose related uh, uh, effect. So, uh, fathers that smoked more had. Uh, uh, transmitted more uh, tandem repeat mutations to, to their children. Um, and this one, it's uh, the, the other um, a slide summarizing studies that have looked at uh, uh, childhood cancer, congenital malformation, perinatal mortality, spontaneous abortion, again, all done in humans. Uh, and you can see that uh, uh, a significant fraction of these studies found a significant effect, and the overall results are summarized here. Childhood cancer is associated, these are the type of uh, childhood cancer that have been associated with uh, uh, not only parent, paternal but also maternal smoking, 
all a long list of different congenital malformations and also pregnancy loss and, and perinatal morta mortality. And uh, still continuing the association between uh, tobacco smoking and cancer in the offspring, these are the statements that uh, uh, are included in the, in the last uh, IARC monograph that evaluated personal habits and, and uh, combustions. And uh, I think there was 2012, uh, David? 2000? Well, recently, recently, and uh, the, the IARC uh, panel concluded that uh, there is a, a casual link between parental smoking and childhood cancer. Uh, it, we went over four recent studies that show that children born to parents who smoke, father, mother, or both are a significantly higher risk of this hepato hepatoblastoma cancer, which is quite a rare cancer, and then uh, uh, some evidence that only paternal sm smoking as well was associated with uh, 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 an increase in cancer, and that there is specifically uh, childhood leuke leukemia. Uh, this meta-analysis and association between paternal smoking before pregnancy and the risk of having childhood leukemia. So the evidence that paternal smoking can contribute to cancer uh, in the offspring, it's uh, quite uh, uh, solid. Uh, we also starting to get some data showing that the effects, there are also some reproductive effects that are affecting not just the smoker but his um, offspring. There are many studies in humans that now have shown that maternal smoking during pregnancy reduced sperm count in sons, but now we're starting having the evidence that the same is happening when the father is the smoker. And there was this initial study by Jonathan, who's actually in, in, in the room today, showed that uh, men of smoking fathers have a 41% lower uh, sperm concentration with respect to the uh, men of non-smoking fathers. And there is now uh, a paper that, it, it is not published yet, but uh, uh, there is a report uh, uh, of a study from the Danish National Birth Cohort that analyzing over 800 uh, 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 cases and confirmed that paternal smoking is associated with lower total sperm count and sperm concentration in their children. So I think now we're starting to have some very solid evidence that uh, you are impacting not just your reproductive chance but also the chance of your children to, to reproduce. And so if we put that together, this is my personal in interpretations of the level of evidence that we have for uh, tobacco smoking inducing these types of effects. So if, if you're looking at uh, impaired fertility and sperm damage, I think we have sufficient evidence that it reduces sperm function. There is strong evidence that increases DNA addux and DNA damage. There is sufficient evidence that uh, induces uh, aneuploid in sperm. Uh, there is sufficient evidence uh, that it induces tan tandem repeat mutations in sperm. Uh, I consider the evidence in children weak because it's only one study, so it would be nice to have additional study confirming that. And then I think that there is strong evidence for tobacco, paternal tobacco smoking affecting inducing congenital abnormalities and sufficient evidence for both cancer in the offspring and reduced sperm count in, in the children of, of smokers. Uh, I'm not going to spend time on this one, uh, Carol uh, went over that, but this is just to remind that even a small increase in mutation may have a large impact at the population side. And so this is the slide that's trying to put everything together um, with respect to genetic damage. And so we have now conclusive evidence that uh, uh, Paternal smoking may result even e uh, either in reducing sperm count uh, or uh, sperm that have some DNA damage that then is transmitted to the embryo, and that DNA damage can have either result in pregnancy, pregnancy loss, depending on the mutation that is transmitted, but more importantly, result in a, in a baby that's born with genomic alterations, potentially susceptible to genomic instability, genetic disease, and reduced uh, uh, fertility. And, and I think that on top of this, we can probably create a similar um, depiction for epigenetic effects, and because probably you, you can end up with the same types of uh, endpoints at the end. 
So what do we need to do moving forward? I think that uh, the, clearly uh, the hanging fruit is to use these new genomic tools uh, to establish that smoking is a clearly a human germ cell mutagen by increasing the number of mutations in the offspring of uh, heavy smokers. It would be really important to quantify the effects in spermatogonous stem cells because these are the cells that are present throughout the life of the individual and so if you affect them, even if you then stop smoking, you are, the damage is done. Uh, it's now there's uh, the ability, ability to evaluate the mutation signatures that can give you confidence that uh, an exposure is happening and the type of exposure that uh, is happening by looking at the pattern of mutation. And, and finally, uh, as we said repeatedly, uh, we need also to look at multi-generation studies to understand how smoking during pregnancy affects the children and the grandchildren of the exposed parents.